Hi everyone, I'm Jack, a radiology trainee in London. Radiology has become incredibly competitive and the radiology portfolio is the only part of the application where you can almost guarantee your score. The portfolio has also changed recently, so today I'll be talking about what the portfolio involves, what those changes are, and then how to get the highest points possible. If you're short on time, I'll also mention how to get points quickly. Timestamps are up here and in the description. Also, I'm setting up a radiology interview preparation course with one of the other London trainees. Also, we're running a free webinar where we'll run through the portfolio criteria and you'll be able to ask us some questions as well. If you want to register interest in that, just fill in the form in the description and we'll email you when the booking opens. This video is not sponsored and portfolio requirements may change in the future, so let's go. To find the portfolio self-assessment checklist, you need to go to the Oriel website. This is the website that's used for all specialty applications in the NHS. Once you've created an account and logged in, go to vacancies and search for clinical radiology, then scroll down and find the vacancy, which is usually London and Kent, Surrey, Sussex. And then in the documents, you'll find the portfolio checklist. At the time of this video, there are seven categories in the checklist and the total points add up to 45. Many of you will know that they recently changed the checklist in quite a big way. The main differences are that they've added sections for leadership and management, teaching qualifications and prizes and awards. They've also removed a few things like scoring for the part one or the full MRCS or MRCP. They've also removed points for intercalated degrees. So in general, it looks like the portfolio requirements are a lot higher, but most people are in the same boat at the end of the day. Anyway, let's move on to the portfolio. The first section is commitment to specialty. This is one of the easiest sections to get full points in. And to do that, you need to have more than one significant exposure to radiology. By that, I don't mean x-ray exposures. In the checklist, a significant exposure is at least three days in radiology, doing either a taster week or a research project, or doing a medical elective or student selected component during your medical school. A taster week is essentially a week in a radiology department seeing what different radiologists do. To organise these, just get in contact with your radiology department and ask who organises the taster weeks. If they don't know, then usually the training programme director for radiology would know. To organise medical electives, you'll just need to find a radiology department to host you for electives, and there are lots of hospitals that do this. For student selected components, usually medical schools offer a wide range of options, or if there isn't one that you particularly like, you can just organise your own SSE usually, as long as you get a supervisor. Whichever you end up doing, make sure you write some reflections during the week and include the reflections, the timetable, and more importantly, the signed letter confirming that you attended the taster week or elective uh, in your portfolio as evidence. However, if you're preparing your portfolio later than medical school, the fast way to get maximum points would be to do two taster weeks in different healthcare settings. You might be saying that you're really short on time for the application, or maybe you're running out of study leave. Theoretically, if you look at the checklist, you only need three days in a department to count as a significant exposure. That means if you did two taster weeks, both of them three days long, it would only take six days of study leave. I would personally recommend doing the full five days because then you do get to know the department better. And also that means people will be more willing to help you with getting projects or help you with the application. But I suppose if you're desperate, then that's possible. Section two is leadership and management. And this is one of the new sections they've introduced. You get points for having a leadership or management role in an organisation either related to radiology, healthcare outside radiology or even outside healthcare. They allocate more points if it's a leadership role in a national organisation and it's related to radiology. The other thing to note is that you have to have been in the role for six months at the time that you apply. So it's very difficult to prepare for this section in a rush. So one of the ways to efficiently score highly in the portfolio is to only go for the highest scoring bracket of the checklist. And that's because even if you have multiple different leadership roles, you only score points for the highest one. The ideal way to get points would be to start in medical school and join your local radiology undergraduate society. Go to all the events and apply to be on the committee. Once you're on the committee, you have access to a really good network of radiology minded people and radiologists. And from connections there, you can leverage your way into a national committee. Usually these may have either junior doctor or medical student uh, positions. If you want to see some examples, I'll make a list of these and I'll just put them on my website for you to look at. The evidence to include for your portfolio is a signed letter by a senior member confirming your role in the committee and also confirming that it was for at least six months. Section three is teaching and training. For this section, you score the most points for being the organiser of a national or international teaching programme. If you look at the criteria, all you need to qualify as a teaching programme is to do regular sessions over three months and then to qualify as a national or international course, your attendees need to be from around the country or from abroad. And finally, you'd need a consultant or a senior figure to sign off your role uh, as the organiser. To get maximum points, it helps to be part of some kind of radiology society because then you can leverage that by offering to create a teaching course 
It can be anything. It can be aimed at medical students, for example, to help them with interpreting chest x-rays or something. And then once you have that audience, you just need to organize some teachers to do the course over three months. It can even be online, which makes it a lot easier to organize. And also by being part of the organization, it adds some legitimacy and weight to the course that you're doing. And it'll definitely impress the people who are marketing your portfolio. If you don't manage to organize it that way, the other thing you can do is organize a local teaching course. This can be for doctors in your hospital. Uh, again, common topics would be teaching the interpretation of chest x-rays. Or if you're in another specialty like A&E or ICU, for example, you could teach inserting lines or chest drains. If you're on surgery, you could organize for some suturing teaching. There's so many things that you could do. I'll put a big list on my website. Finally, if you're really short on time, you can scrape some points by just organizing one session in your hospital and you'd score lower points because it wouldn't be for three months. Whichever you choose to do, make sure you get some feedback and then put a summary of that feedback in your portfolio as well as the teaching timetable and most importantly, the signed letter from someone senior like a consultant confirming your role as the leader of the course. Section four, is formal teaching qualifications. The important thing to remember here is that you can only score for qualifications that you've obtained by the time of your application. So if you're halfway through a master's, it won't count. In my opinion, I don't think it's worth doing a teaching qualification for a year just for radiology, because really you want to be focusing more time on doing the MSRA exam, which has a large weighting in your application. You should do them if you like teaching, or there might be some postgraduate certificates or diplomas in medical education that you can do online part-time. I'll include a list of these on my website. Otherwise, the best way to score points would be to do something like a two-day training the trainers or teaching the teachers course, and there are lots of them out there that you can book. For evidence, include your course certificates. Section five is audit and quality improvement. This section has changed since last year because now to get maximum points, your audits have to be radiology themed and you also have to have demonstrated a change. So they have to be closed loop or two cycles. Also for maximum points, you have to have done two audits or quality improvement projects. The best way to get involved in these is to start early and look in medical school for audits you can be involved in. There are always lots of these running in a department and lots of the trainees would love some help conducting them. That's why it's good to do a taste a week or an elective or an SSC in radiology. I personally helped two of our taste a week doctors get involved in audits. So believe me, there are lots happening. The key thing is to pick the right audit that is simple and quick to complete, and also picking a supervisor that will help you get it to completion. There's a whole list of audit templates on the Royal College of Radiologists website. A link is in the description, but I've also put some of the quickest ones on my website. To get evidence for your audit or quality improvement project, get a signed letter from the consultant supervising you, confirming that you led the audit and it was two cycles, and include the audit presentation in your portfolio. Section six is academic achievements. In this section, you'd get the most points for a postgraduate research degree, like a PhD or an MD. In my opinion, unless you already have one of these, it's not worth doing them. That's because it takes a really long time to do them. And actually they only score you one more point than doing a research project related to radiology. And that's what you should be aiming to do. The quickest ways to get publications are by doing case reports. And in radiology, there are usually lots of interesting cases around. The quickest I've done a case report is about six months. So bear in mind that even these still do take time. The other thing to do is to find the right supervisor. So before you agree to do a project with them, just do a quick Google and PubMed search to see how many publications they produced. What you really want is if you're going to invest a lot of time and effort into a project is that it actually gets completed before you apply. The other way to score points in this section is through oral or poster presentations with more points allocated for national or international meetings. Although they sound intimidating, actually lots of national meetings accept poster presentations fairly easily. So you can take any audits or quality improvement projects or research project that you've been doing and just submit to the conference. The evidence to include for this section is for publications, an acceptance letter from the journal and the PubMed ID number. If possible, including the manuscript itself in the portfolio is helpful. And to evidence your presentations, you just need to include a certificate confirming that you did a presentation, which the conference would usually provide. The final section, number seven, is prizes and awards. This is one of the new sections. And to score full marks, you can either get a distinction in your final year of medical school or get a national radiology prize or a prize at a national meeting, such as a prize for best presentation. If you're still in medical school, then and it's probably worth trying to get a distinction, not only for the points here, but also because your knowledge of medicine as a whole will help with your MSRA score, which is one of the other big parts of the application, testing your general medical knowledge. Alternatively, for prizes, there are lots of prizes such as essay prizes or prizes for audits and presentations nationally that you can apply for. I've included a list of these on my website.
websites, but you can also just Google them. So in summary, to get maximum points, you want to start by getting involved in radiology departments through taster weeks and electives and SSCs, as well as through various radiology committees. And from there, you can get involved in projects and prizes for the rest of the portfolio. After preparing the portfolio, check out my video on how to prepare for the MSRA. If you're interested in a radiology interview preparation course, then register your interest with our form. Leave any questions in the comments, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.